you're listening to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hey guys, we're back. Let's talk about flooring today. (laughs) Oh, the people have questions and we are excited to talk about it. Um, So today's question is, if I am carpeting four bedrooms and everywhere else is hardwood or tile, do you recommend using the same carpet for all four rooms or should they be different? What about colors? Thanks so much. So um, I just have to say really quick, a little shout out to the 80s. I remember we were walking through, we lived in Colorado Springs for like one year and we were buying an existing home. This is my parents in the 80s. I wasn't buying a house in the 80s. I was in first grade. But um, anyway, every single room in the house in the 80s was a different color carpet. And I remember being stoked because one of the bedrooms had red carpet and I chose yeah, that did. room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I bet you looked pretty when you woke but up. But at every that. single threshold, <laughs> oh my gosh, I know, right? At every single threshold, there was a different carpet. It was like a patchwork quilt. It was crazy. They were experimental in the 80s. We were figuring oh, things out gosh. in the 70s and 80s. We're kind of rolling out of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We The yeah, 80s and true. 90s and so forth have figured it all out for us today. So today what we found is do not use a different carpet in in every bedroom. If you can just use the same carpet throughout, I think that's a really great baseline. It's kind of like your hardwood, or I'm sorry, your base moldings, your door casings, your doors. It's kind of like asking, should I use different base molds in every room? Or do you know what I mean? Cool it just idea. feels like the foundation <laughs> of the home. Yeah. So just be really constant throughout that way. And then you can start to develop more personality with paint and furnishings and art and window treatments and other things like that. But just keep your foundation all the same level. Mm-hmm. And go ahead and do different rugs. Absolutely. Oh, if that, yeah. if that was like, I don't know if they're referring We're talking to about carpet area or rugs. rugs. Yeah. Yeah. Carpet is broad loom. And that goes from like base mold to base mold. Like your entire. It's wall to wall carpet. It's wall to wall. Yeah. We're talking about carpet today. Yeah. yeah. That is what we are talking about. But do different rugs in each room. That's fine. But yeah. yeah stay with the same carpet. And Suzanne, would you put a area rug on top of carpet? So glad you asked that, Jessica Bennett. Yes, mm. I would. Indeed, I would. Um, we always think that an area rug really it just kind of creates a room within a room. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of gives you something to anchor everything onto, whether it be your bedroom or your living room or furniture, whatever it is that you've carpeted this space, we would absolutely still do a rug in that area. We would do a rug pad, do a rug pad for sure to keep it there. And it still might shift. We've gone to great lengths to like make rugs not shift yeah but yeah aesthetically visually I still really like it there are some areas your bedroom for example Mm -hmm. that you don't need a rug Mm -hmm. so because of the space so yeah different in every area but yeah we still do rugs on top of carpet yeah how do we feel about carpet do you feel like we should only do carpet in bedrooms do we like it in family rooms do you want to do hardwood in the bedroom do you want to just keep hardwood running throughout the whole house tile running throughout the whole house we like to carpet bedrooms. I know a lot of people, they feel like the more expensive thing to do is have wood go everywhere and to have it go in the master bedroom. And we've done those spaces. And if there, we had one client that was allergic to wool. Mm-hmm. And so she actually, she actually had carpet in her bedroom and it became an issue because it was a health thing. So mm-hmm. we took, we just took that out and we just put down wood. But like Jess says, how do you clean wood? Yeah. If you guys think for one minute about when you're cleaning up your kitchen that has hardwood floors or any area of your house that has hardwood floors, you have to use a paddle mop. And I just cannot imagine having to mop my bedroom. It just seems wrong in my mind. Also, I think you want a soft place to fall at the end of the day and having the softness of um, carpet for both sound absorption as well as comfort, you know, on your joints and your feet and everything. It's just super comfortable and it makes it quiet and soft. And then obviously you can vacuum it, but um, hardwood floors just seem less forgiving. And I feel like the older people get, the harder things are on their joints and their feet hurt and things like that. We're so young. We don't have any We're idea what so that young. would be like. So young. <laughs> Just kidding. But so like we spry. see that, like I hear that even from my parents that, you know, their feet hurt, their joints hurt, that sort of thing. So um, there are, I feel like people are using hardwood floors more and more 
in every space everywhere. But then there's this noise absorption problem. It's just so loud. And there's kind of this um, sort of homey environment about it. You're like, I can't put my finger on it, but like noise just ricochets everywhere. My kids just won't be quiet, you know? So we're, we're for carpet. We really, really like it, especially um, using it in the bedrooms and just use the same carpet. When we are going to switch up carpet, we're huge fans of doing something different going down the stairs. We love a carpet runner. Using um, something that is uh, a small pattern is really easy to for the eye to understand. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes stairs make a curve, and so something organic looks really pretty going down a curved set of stairs. We all saw the striped carpet in the movie The Holiday at Kate Winslet's, and yes. that's darling and so sweet. And so yeah. we're definitely advocates of that and fun patterns, like Jess said. Mm-hmm. I think, too, in closets, that's another spot. Not like just your normal closet for like your kid's room or something, but we do a lot of fashion closets. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really fun spot to change it up. Yeah. So, so that, and usually those are coming off of a bathroom. So it's not a carpet meeting up with another carpet from like a bedroom to a closet. It's usually tile Mm -hmm. happening in a bathroom that's then meeting up with this really wild, crazy animal print or something on the carpet. Yeah. We've used, um, I'm sure you guys have seen the Stark carpet, Stark, S-T-A-R-K. Um, they do amazing, amazing carpets that we love to use for runners. The antelope uh, pattern is one that we've used a lot on staircases and in fashion bloggers' closets. And people love it. The animal print's so neutral, but it's organic. So it's not like a straight up graphic design with like diamonds like that are structured patterns. It moves easily on stairs, around curves, um, In a lot of places, it comes in a lot of different colors. Um, There's even a navy blue antelope carpet. We love the natural one that just looks like real animal print. Mm -hmm. That's super fun. We did a flame stitch on a set of stairs. It was beautiful, kind of looked like needlepoint. Um, So this is a fun way to add a little scarf or um, pocket square moment to your home. If you love that sort of fashionable element, I think it's a really nice finish um, so that's a really fun way to get it in. And heads up, Stark just started another line too. I can't remember if it's called Premiere. Or I'll, I'll look it up and we'll let you know. Anyway, it's it's a l- less expensive, but such good stuff still. So mm. anyway, if you go to your preferred carpet vendor, yeah. you might find say Ask what questions about yeah, that. Stark has another line coming out, and it's mm. really good, guys. That's great. Yeah. Or if you're just kind of tired of your house and need a quick pick me up. Just ripping out your stair carpet and doing something really fun and fashionable would be awesome. Yeah. Or coming off your bathroom and you want to like do something fun in your closet because you're in a mood. That's a really easy way just to get a little spot of something in there to sort of dip your toe in the water. Yeah. How about carpet materials? What are your favorite kind of carpets to use, Jess? I have wool um, throughout my whole home and uh, we've been in our house five years. It still looks brand new today. That's so good. Yeah, okay. it's so great. I've got a, a pattern on my stairs, like we were just talking about. Mine is called Cumulus Cloud, the pattern is, and it sort of is this organic pattern that runs down the stairs. It looks like it just got installed yesterday. We use the stairs all day long, but wool wears so well. And when we were talking to the um, people that sell carpet, one of the benefits of wool is that it's natural and it gives back sort of um, energy. It's like you feel a little bit more buoyant and energetic where they say synthetics kind of suck the energy out of you. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't practice feng shui, um, but I will say that I've loved it. I've loved it. And mine is the natural color of sheep. And so mine's kind of a warm gray tone. And it's so pretty. Everything gets along with it. Super neutral ground. It's not dark like a black car. You know how it shows everything. Do you guys remember in the 90s where there was like hunter green carpet and like you'd see every thread, anything that fell on the ground. Mm-hmm. So it's it's one of those things that I'm like, I should probably vacuum, but I can't tell. You yeah. know, it's a, it's a tight loop. And so it doesn't really show traffic patterns on it either. I love it. Highly recommend it. How about you? Do you have a favorite? Well, well, yeah. Wool yeah. Is, yeah. Wool is so if you're not allergic to wool and you're wanting, it is going to be more expensive, um, probably to the tune of maybe even two X, like two times as expensive as a synthetic carpet. Yeah. But it's, it's really like investing in a great pair of shoes and the whole house will look more expensive if you have a wool carpet in it. Yeah. And I feel like most just generically, most builders in their bids, they will usually put anywhere from like 25 to $35 per square yard mm-hmm. for your carpet allowance. Mm-hmm. Um, wool and the one, our, one of our favorites is called Palermo and it's from a line of, it's called Antrim and they, I think they stock it here locally, like for $50 a yard. So mm-hmm. think when you're and that's a good deal. So if you're going to spend on wool, 
think like low is 50 a yard mm-hmm. and up. And if you're going to use a synthetic, when you go in and talk to them, just say, show me what looks like wool. Yeah. But this is if my If you prices. can't afford to do a wool. Yeah. Because here's the thing, because wool ones. is such an expensive um, material to use, there really isn't an ugly wool carpet. They really are just beautiful classics that um, I feel like stand the test of time. It's It really is like buying a great handbag or something. So if you can't afford to do wool, try and get a lookalike. That's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. I just did a little bit of research on wool. Um, oh, it says, yeah. so job, like Corey. synthetic carpet, $3 yeah. a square foot, not yard. Mm-hmm. Um, and then wool will start at like 10. So, I mean, it could be like three times the product cost, but it's probably going to be the same for someone to install yeah. it. Um, backing your story up with your wool carpet looking brand new. I recarpeted my house two years ago, synthetic carpet. Can't wait to redo it because it's just like, it looks old. It looks kind of like, mm-hmm. I don't know, used basically. And it's, it sucks to live in that. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You'd be like, oh, like my carpet doesn't feel fresh. Mm-hmm. So yeah, maybe yeah, next time it'll be wool. Just yeah. investing. Yeah. Just investing in it once and you don't have to pay for it twice. Yeah. You only have to cry once. Yeah. That's what we tell people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause you'll love it forever. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about um, carpet versus hardwood or tile. Okay. When do we use hardwood or tile versus when do we use carpet? Oh, we use hardwood, I think for most public spaces, like Mm -hmm. if you come into an entry, unless you're in like a really snowy place, if like you're up in Park City or something, you might do like a tiled entry or if you want to if you're dressy or if you're dressy and want to do a whole marble moment and you're kind of a, and if you have like walls to terminate that, but Mm -hmm. we don't typically do like just a little tile pad and a oh, big yeah. Don't room. do the tile pad. Don't do the tile pad. Make sure you can it. run that wall to wall. So like she's saying, if you have a small entry and you can really encapsulate that tile moment and you want sort of a formal feel when you come in. Ooh, formal or funky. You can be real funky with tile. I'm all for that. Yeah. If we're going to be opinionated, I'm saying let's go ahead and tile the entry and let's make it awesome. Amen. But have it, have it, have, have it, have its own walls. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. But everywhere else, like the warmth of wood is so nice. Yeah. And so we do use that even in the kitchen. Comfortable. Are it's like, a living finish. Yeah. Totally. Beautiful. Everything gets along with it. So, totally. so just to clarify, if yeah. your entry opens up like into your like living room, yeah, no tile because you don't want that weird. It's the accent carpet. wall of the yeah. room. Yeah. It's the accent well, wall of the no, floor. No, here's what I want to say. <laughs> the sixth of, wall. Of course, the room on the back side is going to open up into something, yeah. right? So, if you can enclose it with you know two, three walls, I think you can still. Of course, you're going to get away with tile, and mm-hmm. then it will open up into the family room. And, and that's, of course, going to give you that formality, that clicking when you walk across the floor. So it kind of depends on the feel. If you have a beach house, you do not need to tile your entry. That would be crazy. No. You want to be able to walk in, throw your flip-flops off, walk barefoot on it, be on hardwood. You know, so depending on the mood, the personality, the feeling you want to have in your home, um, we, we get to do design for a living, obviously. And so people hire us to really create a mood or an environment. So oftentimes tile or stone entries are the more elevated choice. And we love to create a pattern out of cutting natural stones, a couple of different colors, usually two, sometimes three, and creating our own interesting sort of patterns within them. And that's really elevated, beautiful, grand ballroom, grand hotel lobby feeling. So if you're dressy and kind of formal, then... I would say tile it. it. Other than that, we probably would mostly do a hardwood home for the most part. People are, are going to understand that it's an easy choice to make. And then you can add a little flavor to your entry by using the right entry rug Mm -hmm. to come onto. Yeah. And in like little pockets like that, you can always switch the direction of your hardwood. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Make it it, like herringbone. I think everybody loves that look. Yeah. Herringbone floor. Um, Also, we do it all the time on little pockets or vestibules, mm-hmm. changing the direction of your wood to like concentric rectangles yeah. um, is really a really cool thing. So if you, if you have the opportunity to do what everywhere, find moments to make it special. Yeah. I think that's great. Kind of if it's, if it's easier to, for you to think of it this way, if you picture taking the lid off of your house, just completely removing the home and staring down on it as if it's a dollhouse, you'll see little pockets where you can switch the flooring up and have fun with the design. If you're doing a new build or if you happen to be um, putting in new floors, um, it's not going to cost a lot more money, but it's going to add a lot of interest and it's going to make your home feel custom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But yeah, we love hardwood. We do it in kitchens. We do it everywhere, really, except for bedrooms. Yeah. Bedrooms, we carpet. Yeah. And I think um, hardwood 
you can run it into your bathrooms. A lot of people are going to feel safer doing a tile in bathrooms, wherever there's plumbing. So I'd say laundry rooms and bathrooms, it makes a lot of sense to do tile Mm -hmm. in case your washer machine breaks, in case your toilet floods, you know, in case your sink backs up, then it just makes a lot of sense to sort of waterproof, you know, the flooring in there. And it also, it gives you permission to sort of get a little temperature change and, and do something awesome and change up the experience. So as designers, we love a powder bath. We even love a laundry room. So we love a, a chance to be able to get to play with tiles and give people kind of a, a slick, shiny surface to, to dance on. And as we transition this from wood to tile, if we're going yeah. to start talking about tile, tile that looks like wood oh, is not wood. It is tile. Yes. I'm sorry. I know that everybody thinks that that is just like, I see builders all the time be like, did you see this product? It looks like wood, but it's tile. So we can put mm-hmm. it everywhere. You can spill anything on it. You just can, wipe it right up. You can get your hose and spray down your <laughs> <I know>. house. <laughs> you guys, it's not wood. I think anything that's supposed to, it's trying to look like something that it's not is an imposter. Get it out of there. Yeah. We hate nobody it. likes Don't that. Don't use it. No. No. It looks cheap. No. It's a liar. We, I know. We it. feel it. And we're just like, ah, oh, what am I, what am I stepping on? It has grooves <gasps> and it has, and wood does not have grout. You guys, wood flooring does not have grout. <laughs> yeah. You're not fooling anybody. It is tile. Yeah. That's what I have to say. We see that. you. We, we see, see you, you wood tile. You pretending to be wood. Get out of here. Yeah. There's no place for you. Uh, anyway, just use tile. Be true to yourself. <laughs> Be true to the world. Have some integrity. Jeez Louise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That's all I have to say about that. Thanks, Sue. Preach. And on. And on. Carry on. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Um, let's talk about needing to use rugs. Okay. Yeah. This is a happier moment for me. I love <laughs> rugs. is back. <laughs> I'm back. Oh, my evil twin sister that hates wood tile is gone. <laughs> um, we love rugs. We do. Oh my gosh. Rug, I think we kind of talked about this, I think in a previous episode or maybe it's coming up. I don't mm-hmm. know. But rugs, it's the biggest piece of artwork in the room. And so really you can have a lot of fun with rugs. And again, we always start there and we're going to start a television show called fun with rugs by Suzanne Hall (laughs) jazz hands (laughs) no you can have a lot of fun and it is the biggest piece of art and we actually there's almost like not a room that we're not going to use a rug in again this isn't wall-to-wall carpet this is a area rug an accent rug you need them by your back door you need them by your front door you need um, a, a runner in front of your kitchen sink um, the powder bath could probably use a little spot in front of the sink. Um, yeah, it's really hard to think of a place where you couldn't throw a rug to really add some personality and some interest to a space. Yeah, and whether, Huge that's, fans. And whether that's patterned or textured, something, yeah. it's just, it's so lovely. It's fun to feel different experiences with your feet. Yeah, It's just, it's a tactile relationship to the floor. We love rugs. Mm-hmm. So go crazy. Yeah. What else do you want to know? <laughs> what else shall do we you want to know rugs? anything about rugs, Corey, Corey since Moore. you're the gentleman in the room? Um, no, but I do have a, like kind of moving on to that next question, like transitioning, like yeah. what do you do in the transition between materials and to make it like not look, we've talked about this like out of sight of the podcast, but to not like get the carpet patch, you know what I mean? To have that situation. So what do you, when do you transition and how do you do that? Good question. Yeah. So I think at the front door, let's start there. There's always going to be a rug because we have to be able to wipe our feet off and receive somebody onto something warm. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to use something bigger than you think you need. We're not talking about a four by five here or like a two by three just to wipe your feet off. We're talking like really receive people onto it. Um, And it's going to make your entry feel a lot bigger if you use a larger rug. Let's just say that we're in the formal house that has a beautiful tile entry. And then you're going to click on over to the hardwood floor, wherever that picks up. And then you're going to meet another area rug at the center of the furniture grouping. And that rug hopefully will extend underneath the furniture and not be floating in front of the furniture legs. So yeah, so it's not that you're going to see, you don't always see every rug you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're usually you're experiencing a rug in solidarity and then you're going to walk into another scene and then see a rug, you know, getting along with other things too. We do love to understand though the relationship of the rugs, like we talked about on the other podcast, just making sure that they all get along and their sort of like-mindedness mm-hmm. or that they travel into the next experience well and not 
too shocking, depending on your style, you know, and what you're trying to create. If you're trying to create drama, then maybe there is a lot of dark and light, that sort of thing. Um, or if you're very modern, you're probably not going to use a ton of pattern. It'll probably just be more textures. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's one school of thought. But I think that it's not as nerve wracking as um, as it may sound to use a lot of rugs because they're really kind of happening within their own room in the house. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Okay. Yep. Think of it kind of like when you go into an art gallery and you travel from one room to the next, there's always something that's tying them together. Yeah. Right. Whether it be the wall color on the wall or the medium, or even when they are different, they're still, they're still companions yeah. to one another. So yeah. when you're looking at all your rugs, again, just print them all out, look at them all together, mm -hmm. maybe before you purchase that next one and make sure it's going to get along with what you already have. Mm -hmm. And not every rug needs to be a hero. No. Yeah. Like that back door rug doesn't need to be heroic. It just blend. needs to be quiet and get along and blend into the floor maybe. And then the kitchen rug or the kitchen runner in front of the sink that maybe it's nearby. I'm thinking of my own house. That one can maybe be a little bit more of the pocket square in the mm -hmm. room. So that utilitarian rug can just sort of, um, I have like a jute rug at my back door that blends into my blonde floor and you don't really see it, but it still catches the dirt um, when my puppy comes in and out and and then transitions really easy. And it's just a backup dancer. She's not the front liner. She's just easy to get along with. So that goes for a lot of things in the home. You have to kind of choose your heroes. So a lot of times the rug in the middle of the family room, though, I love for it to be the hero yeah. or one of the heroes in the Make room. A splash. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. A few words of advice that we have on some of these topics of hardwood and carpet. We want to tell you some of our favorites. And yeah, Jess, hardwood. What's your favorite hardwood? Yeah, well, so right now, um, what seems to be trending, but also I feel like a really fantastic choice is a white oak. There are lots of different ways to get a white oak. Riff sawn or quarter sawn are going to be the most expensive, and that's, good. that's what's going to give you a straight grain. Um, straight grains are something that are really easy to live with. You don't have those big cathedrals in the wood. They're not opinionated and it's beautiful and it's a really good transitional wood. And a lot of people that we talk to today are in that transitional space, which is somewhere between uh, contemporary and traditional. So it's just a good mix. Blonde floors, um, they can range from being warmer to cooler. You can um, find ways to get uh, grains so that it kind of cools them down a little bit. So it's not that honey oak that we knew in the nineties. There are engineered hardwood floors, which I think are a fantastic cho choice. I'm living with a sand and finish white oak floor in my own house. And we've installed since then so many engineered white oak floors and the finish you can get on an engineered floor makes me kind of jealous that I didn't do it because they're finished in the factory. They're baked on um, the lacquers and everything else. And they're just so much stronger than using uh, your typical sand and finish floor. Cases can be made for both. Um, just some advice as you're, if you're in the middle of a remodel right now, or you're considering building, these are just words of advice that you can kind of store in the back of your head when you're shopping. Don't be afraid of the engineered hardwoods. They do a great job. You can get a wider plank that's engineered. So it's not going to cup and it's not going to separate. And if you do have a mishap, I understand that you can easily replace, or you can replace a plank with a sand and finish floor. You can't experience that. So white oak is my choice if you're casual. Um, if you're dressy and want something classic and more traditional, a walnut floor mm, is, yeah. is always been a favorite of ours and has always been great. I mean, since forever, I can't ever think of a time that walnut felt like it was trending. Mm -mm. You yeah. used to have in your Alice Lane house, you had Brazilian cherry, right? Brazilian cherry. And it was dark and it had some red undertones in it. And every time I let our puppy out to go potty and then come back in, I had little paw prints all over my floor. It was like trying to keep a black car clean and nothing's prettier, but it was so much work. And I was like, never again will I ever live with a dark floor. Um, those might be my famous last words in 10 years, but <laughs> living with a white oak floor, I just have to tell myself to clean it because it never looks dirty. You know, it's just really, really forgiving. I live in a more, it looks like a beach house. Um, it's just, you know, so the blondes and the lighter tones look really great. So it, it fits my mood and, and my casualness. And I love it. I'll, I do it again right now. I love it. A true gift to yourself. Good yes, job. totally. Good job. Uh, let's give them some advice about if they're shopping for um, tile today or if, if they're going into a tile store to do some tile shopping for their floor. 
um, or if they're going to go in and go shopping for carpet, what are they looking for? Okay. For tile, if you're going to be doing a formal entry or your master bath, we'll usually be sticking with natural stones because they're, they look and are the most expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, but we usually do them honed most often, unless you want something really dressy, you can do it polished, but we're more drawn to the marbles. Mm -hmm. I would say, um, for those tile combinations, we'll do marbles. Also do limestones. Limestones can be a little tricky. If my mother's listening, you know what I'm talking about, Judy, um, (laughs) Provo grandma, um, she's had some trickiness with her limestone flooring. So talk to the people you're buying them from and see if you are a good candidate. Yeah. If you're a good candidate for, for a limestone. limestone or if the space you're talking about, if it's your kitchen, maybe don't do limestone. Mm-hmm. Stick with wood or a hardier tile. Um, and it, also, if you don't want to pay for a marble floor or a limestone floor, if it's not in your budget, what you're looking for is something that looks like limestone or marble. Mm-hmm. Because anytime we do something that is natural, or looks as close to being natural as you can, there will be no regrets. Nope. Yeah. No. So just if you're like, what do I even look for? I'm just trying to give you a visual or some language to talk to the person at the tile shop or the hardwood shop or the carpet shop. These are just ideas that you can just march in confidently and be like, I know what I'm looking for. Yeah. Look yeah. for something that feels natural. Yes. Natural and that Mother Earth gave birth to. Yes. And I think when you, there's a lot of like flashy metallic porcelain tiles that you're yep. going to see. They're going to be like, wow, this isn't very much much money, but it looks fun. Yeah. Um, you'll tire of it. Yeah. You will tire of it. She's a cheap and dancer. And she'll be, she'll, she's a yeah. cheap dancer and she's gonna, she's gonna go out of style and then you're gonna yeah. be like, oh, I have to replace my tile flooring because you're sick of her. Yeah. So just again. Because you bought it in that shiny phase of life. <laughs> Dang it. With that weird plaid strie on it or something. Or, yeah. Yeah. And any, any pattern like funky tiles like that, like just use them sparingly because you will tire of them. Yeah. So that's just a heads up. Good advice. So, yeah. Carpet. Carpet. I think we, we already gave wool. them the advice. Yeah. If you're yeah. not, if you, if wool is not in the budget, get something that looks as close to wool as possible. I really love a loop right mm-hmm. now because I know I love rugs and I'm going to want to yeah. layer it on there. So if I have a plush carpet with like a high pile, then I'm not going to be able to use an area rug mm-hmm. because it's just too wiggly and wormy to walk on two rugs at the same time. But I love that sort of um, low loop underfoot. And then I can put my, you know, knotted rugs on top. They lay flat. They don't wiggle around. Um, So if you know that you're going to want to layer things in, then look at the looped patterns instead or the looped um, carpets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Get a good pad. Yes. Sound advice. It sounds like the advice we'd give our children going off to college. (laughs) Go ahead and get yourself a good pad. Yeah. 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 Don't forget to not chimp on the undercoats. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Well, I hope that you guys learned a little bit today and um, yeah, take some of this into uh, shopping with you and uh, hopefully we can be the voice in your head and and you learned a little bit. Don't get the tile that looks like wood. (laughs) (laughs) Suzanne whispers before we trail out. I agree. Don't get the tile that needs grout. (laughs) I mean the wood that needs grout. (laughs) Hey, thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 